بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم One aspect of Islamic value system which should reflect in Islamic management we said is respecting freedom that Allah has given to every human being. So as much as possible, we should let people be free, but of course we need discipline, we need organization, but we shouldn't unnecessarily remove freedom of people for our own convenience, okay? The other thing that we want to discuss is high regard for human dignity. Yesterday we had some hints in Q&A uh, a very important characteristic, uh, characteristics of any uh, good scholarship is to be consistent. You know, this is very important. And this is what I ask Allah to help me with. That when you are taking a position in philosophy, or in chalam, or in akhlaq, or in knowing imams, in relations with other people, you know, Sunnis, Christians, etc., to be consistent. Not that everywhere you say something. If you follow uh, our courses and lectures and books, I think, I hope, inshallah, you find that this is very much what I try to do. And uh, if there is any success, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when I talk about dignity here, we have already established that dignity is the, you know, one of the main qualities in Islamic ethics. Mm -hmm. We have already discussed this about Imam Hussein, about Imam Mahdi. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's very consistent. Otherwise, you cannot understand the system. So, dignity or karama, of course you can you know, sometimes use dignity for izza, you can use it for karama, you can use dignity, honor. It's very fundamental quality. To the extent that Ayatollah Mutahari says, this is the core of Islamic ethics, izza and karama. In Hose's series of akhlaq, we discussed the issue of dignity. Also, in one uh, Muharram, we had a series on dignity in Islam. But I said my humble opinion is that at the same time, dignity is very, very important. But more fundamental than dignity is truthfulness. So I have my position is that the most fundamental thing is truthfulness. But dignity is very much connected to truthfulness. And uh, the ayah which inspired me was, إِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيز لَا يَأْتِيهِ الْبَاطِلِ When there is izza, then you are in a better position or in a good position to have izz, uh, dignity and be away from falsehood. In any case, a good manager should be himself or herself very dignified, honorable person, and should offer this to his or her staff, customers, clients, even the way you deal with your competitors should be with dignity. Yeah, not that you know, you do everything to damage them because you want to get rid of competition. Okay, everything must be with dignity and honor. And this, inshallah, will be 
something that will be universally established in the time of Imam Mahdi ta'ala farajahu sharif in dua iftata we say Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatin karima we convey to you our desire for an honorable government what is dawlat karima if someone asks you what are the qualities of honorable government or governance for sure people who make that government and run it must be dignified people but also the way they deal with the citizens with foreigners with refugees with any person that comes to the rich they should receive very honorable and dignifying uh, you know treatment yeah this is dawlat karime you cannot say dawlat karime only respects its own citizens but when it comes to others he is denying them honor is humiliating them no okay so this is why i say we as muslims and followers of ahlul bayt should try to be uh, the most respectful people the most honoring people in the world generally speaking okay these are some of the main values that we have to observe then we go to the next chapter management needs planning so chapter three is on planning planning plays a significant role in management whether it be in personal you want to manage your own personal affairs you need to plan for your study for your i don't know uh, holidays for your you know finance for your health everything you need to plan for family for community or if it's a business it's a corporation you need to plan rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told ibn mas'ud one of his companions yabna mas'ud idha amilta amalan fa'mal bi'ilmin wa aqlin whenever you do something do it with knowledge and rationality yeah with wisdom وَإِيَّاكَ وَأَنْ تَعْمَلَ عَمَلًا بِغَيْرَ تَدْبِيرًا وَعِلْمٍ Do not do anything without tadbir, without planning and without knowledge. In some versions it says وَإِيَّاكَ وَأَنْ تَعْمَلَ عَمَلًا بِغَيْرَ تَدَبُّرٍ وَعِلْمٍ so, in one version is tadbir tadbir means to plan things in advance tadabbur means reflecting on the consequences which is a great part of planning that you say if we do this this happens if we don't do this this happens and therefore we make necessary measures so everything with knowledge with rationality and with planning considering consequences sometimes unfortunately some people who are not very deep in their understanding they do things and they say we put our trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawakkaltu ala allah tawakkalna ala allah no you have to collect information you have to consult discuss make plans and then put your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawakkul does not replace thinking and consultation and planning tawakkul is after you do your best and then you do tawakkul and you are also sure that no matter how you know you plan you have to submit everything to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because al abdu yudabbir wa rabbu yuqaddir yeah but we have to do tadabbur we have to do tadbir both of them we cannot ignore the significance of planning if a mu'min with a strong iman and tawakkul but does everything that people who have no faith do when they want to plan 
Yeah? We should not be less than atheists or you know, seculars in planning, in collecting evidence, in discussing, in learning from our mistakes. We should be better than anyone else in doing all these things, but on top of that, we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So it's not that we reduce our professionalism because we have tawakkul. No, we have to be more professional than secular people, but with tawakkul. Okay? So if you are producing a car, you must not underestimate the risks, for example, and say, you know, because our people are Muslims and they give sadaq, <laughs> so we don't need to be very careful about, for example, the steels or, you know, brakes, etc. No, we have to do better than any other car producing company in the world, plus put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the success of your business. A manager should be knowledgeable in his field and plan everything wisely to accept a task while being incompetent is to commit an act of injustice. So if I am offered, even I don't ask, I didn't ask for it, but someone offers me a job, yeah? And I know that I am not familiar, I'm not expert, I am not you know, uh, competent. I must not accept. I must not say, it was, you know, their decision. They found me suitable, so I have to accept. No. If I am not qualified for a job, even if they insist, I must not accept. Because this is khiana. This is to betray uh, umma. This is to betray myself even. To accept a task while being incompetent is to commit an act of injustice. Planning implies setting clear goals and priorities, consulting others, and proper time and resource management. Alongside planning, Islam places great emphasis on nazm. Yeah, to be orderly, to be organized, to be punctual. Imam Ali alayhi salam, in his final will, after he was, you know, struck by Ibn Muljam, he advised his children and everyone who receives this will. He said, Usikuma wa jami'a waladi wa ahli wa man balagahu kitabi. Everyone who receives this message. Bitaqvallah wa nazma amrikum. It's amazing that right after taqwa comes nazm. How much in our teaching, how much in our practices, we have prioritized nazm to be orderly, to be organized. Amir al Mumin brings right after taqwa. But taqwa Allah wa nazm amrakum. Alhamdulillah, we have people and groups who are very organized and we see how much they make progress. I said, actually, if you don't have naz, many times your taqwa will be also compromised. Yeah? Because, because for example, if you are a teacher, if you are a scholar, and you don't have naz, then you don't, for example, prepare for the class. You don't you know, correct the papers, for example. I don't know. So you end up ignoring some of your duties and this is against taqwa because taqwa is not just to pray and fast or if you are a i don't know a re repairman who doesn't do job properly then you cannot say i am muttaqi or you delay for example you are a, an architect or i don't know builder a house you were supposed to make in six months you make it in one year so this is against taqwa 
Sometimes it's out of control, but many times with planning and being organized, you can, you know, deliver the job you have committed yourself to. Then I said, even those who plan and consider the future cannot reach their aims without commitment and nazm. Often people have adequate plans, but their lack of proper organization brings failure. For example, many countries have impressive laws and regulations and plans, five-year plans, ten-year plans, but they make no progress. <laughs> because they are not implementing those plans. Therefore, without losing sight of the past and the present, we should always think of the future. Thinking about future is very important because it gives you direction and you realize what you have to do now. But if you forget future, you will get, uh, you know, a stock with day-to-day affairs. So, success demands farsightedness and planning. Furthermore, farsightedness needs optimism. Because someone who perceives the world as turning against them and believes everything to be predestined and out of their control would not plan nor take a step towards improvement. So if you believe in the ability to change and are optimistic, then they plan and try to improve. Yeah? We should remain positive, keep our goals in mind and implement all measures necessary to achieve them. It's easy to say, but many times in practice, we forget these things and, you know, we just become, you know, pessimistic and, you know, reactionary. Then we have a discussion about ambition. If you remember in one retreat in Canada, we talked about ambition. When considering goals, we should not be content with minor results. Good progress comes with lofty ambitions and indeed a believer should be very ambitious. But not in dunya and worldly matters, you know, to be ambitious in the sense of having, you know, lots of money, lots of properties, you know. No, we are talking about ambition in things which really matter. For example, when it comes to your personal development, why you cannot be one of the best people in the world? When it comes to spirituality, to knowledge, to marifa, to wisdom, to kindness. Look at Dua Kumil. We say to Allah, Ej'alni min ahsan abidika naseeban indak. One of the servants that has the greatest share near you. Ahsan abidika naseeban indak. Ba aqrabihim manzila. Nearest position to you. Wa akhassihim zulfatan ladak. To be among the most select of them in proximity to you. Or in uh, Imam Sajjad's Munajat of Muridin. And Taj'alani Men Awfarahim Minka Hadha. It's very beautiful. Uh, you know, normally Hadh means share and benefit. So you have Hadh from knowledge, you have Hadh, I don't know, from pleasure, Hadh from money. I, yeah? But Imam says, Awfarahim Minka Hadha. Hadh from God. How much of God you have? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. 
means how much of his love, his attention, his nearness you have achieved. Imam says, I want to be among the people who have the fullest share from you. I want to have the greatest portion of your wood and friendship. So this is ambition. Munajat al Muridin. Yes. In one of the du'as of the months of Ramadan, there is a du'a that maybe some people wonder, you know, why we make such a du'a. But the way to understand is to look at it from this perspective. We say to Allah, As'aluka an tukrimani bihawani man shi'ta min khalqik. I appeal before you to grant me honor by humbling whoever of your creatures you like. Okay? So some people may say, you know, why you want other people to be, you know, humiliated, for example. The idea is not that we, don't want, we want people to be humiliated. It means that let me be the first, even if it means that others will be second and the third. This is the meaning. Not that we want them to lose their honor and you know, dignity and be considered as bad people. No. It means that I want to proceed. If there are people that they don't want me to proceed, they should, you know, be left behind. If there are people that my progress means their failure. The right model is, Islamically, that we all proceed. Okay, I have this uh, idea about competition. Because I remember once a person sent me a clip of... Uh, a speaker that was talking about competition and you know that you have to win and you know others you know will lose etc something like that I said no this is not Islamic model Islamic model is that we are one team and in the team everyone tries to work harder so that has the honor of making the whole team win I don't want to be lazy and put responsibility and you know, burden on others. I want to work harder so that through my efforts, I have the greatest portion of being the reason for success. But then all of us will succeed. You do the same. Everyone does the best that they can so that we all succeed. Okay? So my success and your success come together. But if there is someone that either I have to succeed or he has to succeed because he doesn't want my success, we say, oh Allah, make me succeed even if someone is going to lose. As'aluka an tukrimani bihawane man shi'ta min khalqik. Okay? So when Allah says, سَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ or إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ This tanafus and competition is neg not negative. Actually, we inspire each other. We try to help each other, support each other. And also, if I know for any reason, this is the limit I can reach. For any reason. I shouldn't say, oh Allah, don't let others you know, surpass. If this is my limit, oh Allah, make everyone go further. But if there is no limit for me fixed, make me the one who can be at top. Do you understand? So we don't want to keep anyone behind us. But we don't want to be behind anyone. It's a very positive way of thinking. You know, one of the big... Uh, test is when you have been manager or running a place or teacher for a class and you are leaving especially if you are leaving because they didn't appreciate you or whatever then sometime deep in your heart maybe even unconscious level you want that after you leave they fail 
so that they appreciate you <laughs> and say, you know, we should have, you know, benefited from it. But this is selfish. Yeah? We should not want any organization, any institution to fail so that they realize our insights or wisdom. Yeah? So you have to pray that even if they made a mi big mistake in how they treated me, I pray that they succeed. I pray that this lesson, they don't learn it by failure. <laughs> Inshallah, they learn it in another way. It's a very big task, te test, yes. Salehin is very high. Salehin is not uh, uh, ordinary. Yeah, but Ibadika Salehin is very high. Even Ibrahim used to pray al hiqni bas Salehin. And some ulama say, I am not sure myself, but uh, great ulama, like Ayatollah Tehrani, they say, Dua of Ibrahim to be among Salihin was answered in Akhirah, not in Dunya. Because Quran says, وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So even in Dunya, he was not included in Salihin. But Yusuf was. Yusuf was. I don't uh, agree necessarily because I say Allah is confirming that in Akhirah he is but he doesn't say that in dunya he was not but they say no anyway Salehin is such a high caliber that Ibrahim is praying to be among them yes yeah yeah that's ambition If Allah makes you Imam is good. Not you yourself makes yourself, you know, Imam. But if Allah makes you Imam, gives you the qualities, prepares you for that. Yeah? Sometimes a position comes from Allah. Sometimes a position is because I have, you know, talked to this person, to that person, you know, did politics to get the position. This is not good. Yeah. Many times, not always, but many times they come in plural form. And this is what we discuss in social velaya, that you should always look at every opportunity to represent the group and ask for the group. Yeah. So if you have ability to talk to the king, you can ask only for yourself, you can ask for your community. So whenever we have opportunity to pray to Allah, it's better to pray for all of mu'mineen and mu'minat, not just for ourselves. This is very important. Even in Salat, we say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدْ إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِهْدِنَا السَّرَاتَ الْمُسْتَعِينَ Up to the end, As-salamu alayna, not As-salamu alayya. So we try to always Remember mu'mineen and mu'minat. In du'a iftitah, Allahumma inna nargabu ilayk. Allahumma inna nashku ilayk. In du'a yunudbe, mata tarana wa narak. In ziyarat aminullah, the same. So, uh, it's not always plural, sometimes singular, but many times it's plural. Yeah. Because we represent community. So whenever there is an opportunity, you think about community first. Then about yourself. In Du'ai Ahd, first you send salutations. And Jami' al-Mu'mineen wa al-Mu'minat fi mashariq al-arza wa maghariba sahla wa jabala barra wa bahraha. Then you say wa anni an walidayya. So first think about community. One 
thing that in planning you have to consider is to refrain from exceptions. Don't allow for exceptions. For example, you have a plan to do something. Something happens if you say, okay, today we don't do it. For example, you have set up a goal for yourself for a study or for mubahasa. Then something happens, you say, okay, I do it tomorrow. Then tomorrow, say, okay, you know, I have a visitor. The next day, you know, I have to take my family somewhere. The next day, I am ill. So when you allow exceptions, they never stop. You have to be avoiding exceptions as much as possible. There may be some things that, you know, you cannot do anything about them. But as much as possible, don't allow exceptions. Once we have set a goal and designed a plan, we need to be determined not to deviate from it. So here, then I have a little discussion about value of time and opportunities. Opportunities come in certain times. Time in general is very important, especially the times in which you receive opportunities. Okay, so there are two things. Time and opportunities that come sometimes in time. We have to be very careful about them. But maybe we can have a break, and after break, inshallah, we continue. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.